lesson is just because you want God in it doesn't mean you've got God in it. I don't know. Maybe the lesson is the thing you make with good intentions is the very thing the devil will use to cut your head off. What's the lesson? What's the lesson? Maybe the lesson is you might have thought it was safe, but your enemy knows it's just a snare. What's the lesson? Maybe the lesson is just because God blesses you and uses you doesn't mean you can turn around and use God. What's the lesson? Maybe the lesson is don't make a simple thing hard. If God has not led you down that road, then what are you doing on that road? What's the lesson? Maybe the lesson is how far is it between what's right and what's wrong? How far is it between a life of, that you can be proud of and a life of shame? How far is it between the legacy of a good name and the legacy of a failure. How far is it? How far is it? It's not far at all. No. It's not far at all. The Bible says in verse 32, Gideon the son of Joash died at a good old age. Buried in the tomb of Joash's father in his city of Ophrah of the Abyssalites. Listen to it. And so it was. As soon as Gideon was dead, children of Israel again played the harlot with the Baals, made Baal beareth their God. And thus the children of Israel did not remember the Lord thy God who had delivered them from the hands of all their enemies on every side nor did they show kindness to the house of Gideon in accordance with the good that he had done. He died and nobody cared. He was gone and nobody even regarded his family. Risked his life to free his people. And he dies ignored, unthought about, unremembered. Because it's not far between fame and failure. It's not far. <laughs> it's not far at all. There was one word I could think of to describe Gideon's life. It would be the middle. Middle. Yeah. Didn't have great beginnings. All right? Didn't start off well. God caught him as a grown man, man with weak faith. Daddy was an idolater. But God saw something in him that he could use. And he, and he used him to, 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 to create a tremendous victory for the people of God in the name of God. 
the middle of his life. But then things leveled out. Instead of finishing high, finishing strong, it just kind of fizzled out in the end. Playing around with a ephod he never should have made. Trying to get the glory back that he lost. Trying to turn the people back around from the idolatry that he had led them into. He just kind of fizzled out. He was only good in the middle. The middle of his life. But you see the way the way our stories go, the way God's got this thing set up, it's not so much our beginnings. It's not so much the middle. What God tells us to do is finish well. Finish strong. You don't really get points for in the middle if you don't finish strong. I think that's what Gideon I think that's what Gideon says to us today. I think I think that's his gift to us as we put him in the ground. Don't let your middle years be your best years. Hmm? Finish strong, finish right. Because it's not far between a life you can be proud of and a life filled with shame. So you may, maybe you're here today, friend of mine, and God's speaking to your heart and you want to say, Lord, yeah, you used me before, but I can't ride off how things used to be. I want you to do something fresh and new and amazing with the life I got left. I don't want to flame out like this man did. I don't want to make bad decisions like this man did. I don't want to go out pleasing you with my life. I want the end to be better than the middle. So maybe you're here today and you're saying, yeah, Lord, that's my prayer. That's my prayer. Yesterday is gone, but tomorrow is yet to come. And when it gets here, I want to give it the best I've got. You feel that way? Mm -hmm. So if you're willing and your heart is, is open to it, would you just lift your hand to him now and say, yeah, Lord, let my end be better than my right. Let my end be better than my middle. Let it be better than my right now. Let my end be epic. Let it be historic. Let, let the angels sing about my ending. Second appeal, maybe you're here and the Spirit of God speaks to, is speaking to you and, and you saying, yes, Lord, I heard my lesson in there. I heard, I heard my lesson in there. I heard that I can't just give God what I want, stick his name on it and think he's going to be in it too. No. I heard my lesson. Because I, I heard that, that I can't take what's important to God and do what I want to do.
but I must use it for his glory. I heard my lesson. You say. And maybe you're here and you want to say, Lord, not only did I hear what you had for me today, but Lord, I want to walk in that thing. I want to, I want to order my life by it. I want it to correct me and order my steps. That your desires, that your, is that what you need today? Anybody? Anybody? You're raising your hand. Yeah, Lord. That's me. I, let me learn from Gideon's mistakes so I don't walk down that path myself. I see your hands. Somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody else? God bless each one of you. And then, and then finally, maybe you're here today because you need a church home. Maybe you're here today because you need a Savior. Maybe you're here today because you need a change. We offer that to you today in Christ's name. As your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Maybe somebody needs to come to Jesus. Maybe somebody today needs to make a decision about a church home. Maybe somebody here today needs to make a decision about a change in their lives. You make it in your mind and we'll help you see it through. So if you're here today and you made that kind of decision, I encourage you right now to move from where you are and make your way forward. You're coming for, you're coming to join the church, you're coming to commit to Christ, you're coming to seek a change. Any of those three, you're coming right now. You're here? You're here? He come now. He come now. In the balcony, God speaking to you, you can come now. 